Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Back by popular man demand, everybody. This is the VidIQ Q&A session. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello everybody, I'm Rob and welcome back to vidIQ. If this is your first time here, we have a YouTube tool and channel that aims to educate you on your YouTube journey and we're going to do exactly that today by answering all of your wonderful vidIQ YouTube your channel questions. But I could not do this alone and I'm welcoming in our guest uh, host today, uh, for all, both from Team vidIQ. So we will start with Liron, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hello everybody, my name is Liron Segev, I am a tech YouTuber, just like a lot of you are, and I'm the Director of Customer Success here at VidIQ, and we're going to have an awesome session. And last but not least, I think we'll say I'm least in this uh, particular uh, trio, uh, who have we got next in the VidIQ uh, virtual office today? It's me, your Mario. No, it's me, your Travis. So, <laughs> uh, my name is Travis. I'm here with the customer success team as well, looking to help you grow your channel. And uh, man, I'm super excited for today's Q&A. Yeah, and as I say, uh, as by popular demand, Travis did an awesome uh, audit session on Tuesday, so we've got him back in uh, the hot seat. We just want to say hello to people joining the live stream here, which include uh, the likes of Ivy from the vlog. I love that username. Pro Gamer seven 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 Hayes House Super Gaming MK Mansketter Red Guy Gaming Lerong. Let's have yep. some more. Oh, I'm going to have to pick up El Jefe. Jeff is here. Or oh, as you called him last week, El Jefe, which was <laughs> We all thought that was hysterical. Um, <laughs> Tam Cam is here. Um, Alexander Grand's here. Uh, number, number one Martian. Okay, that's got to be a cool channel. Um, and then Super User Tech Mods is here as well. Hello, everybody. And that Travis, was- round us off with a few more joining the live stream today. Yeah, Advanced Gamer 411. Uh, we got the Mixer, Gummy Bear Gaming. That sounds fun. Uh, cool. Great Outdoors. Um, wow, they're just coming in hot and heavy. Uh, Needless TV Official, uh, Shy Blocks, and just a tremendous amount of people. Uh, love to see everyone here today. Yeah, you along with the 100 other people who are joining our live stream here. Thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us, but we hope we can uh, uh, reward you with some really useful YouTube chat. And this is simply a Q&A session. What we're going to be doing here is taking your questions. There is a link in the video description that takes you to a Google form where you can fill out the question uh, thing, very short, and we're going to be tackling those questions throughout this live stream. Uh, just a quick thank you to Ethan uh, Aaron Berger, who gave us a super chat there. Thank you very much for the five dollars. Really is appreciated. All right, let's just jump into this. Uh, Travis and Liron, I'll take our first question, uh, which comes from uh, Corrupt YT, and the question is: As a content creator who recently hit one thousand subscribers, congratulations to you. What is the best way for a mobile game creator, Clash of Clans, to get people to watch their videos as well as get clicks and watch time. So a channel with a bit of momentum here, how can they capitalize on that? I'll uh, push this one to Travis first. What do you think on this one? Um, you know, Lima and I definitely talk to a lot of gaming channels and there's there's so many different really cool ways to grow your channel. Um, I like to do something that seems super easy and super obvious is to look for other channels in your niche that are doing it right. Like what is their thumbnail strategy? What is their titling strategy? What kind of videos are they making? Um, more than likely, there's other channels like yours that are doing this exact game, and there's always tips and tricks you can uh, you can grab from the bigger channels that are doing it well. So always look to the people that are doing it successfully in your niche, and it might be something as simple as a call to action at the very beginning of the video. They might be interacting with their subscribers in some way. Um, just be looking for every little thing that they're doing right. Liron. Yeah, I would definitely echo um, what Travis is saying. The other thing I would do is maybe start engaging with social media in communities which talk about Clash of Clans. Maybe there is a closed Discord server. Maybe it's a Facebook group. Um, You know, go comment on other people doing the same gaming content. Um, Don't spam them, obviously, but kind of say, hey, cool, cool videos. Really dig when you did A, B, and C. Other people will see your comment and naturally they see your subscriber card. They want to see what you're about to click on there. So we fish where the fish are. 
My final thought would be is uh, with a channel with a thousand subscribers, you probably already have two or three videos which have been breakout content and have done really well for your channel. So it's, it's a usual thing. It's doubling down on that content, finding what are the really specific videos that have worked for you within Clash, and Clash of Clans and then doubling down on that, whether it's how to get more Elixir or how to uh, buy uh, buildings more cheaply. There is no doubt a couple of videos on your channel that have two, three times the amount of views that you usually would get, concentrate on them. Thank you for the first question there. Uh, we'll go to the next one, which is probably a, a quite a quick one here, but an interesting one from Skyflyer. And he asks, uh, so we'll take it in turn and we'll let Leron answer this one first. How many channels do you think you have helped to get to 1,000 subscribers? The, today or kind of in jet? In jet in <laughs> what's, oh, oh, what's confident answer there from uh, uh, Leon? A uh, lot. I mean, I mean, when we speak to a lot of creators, we speak to them. It, it doesn't matter what the size is. I mean, we literally, Travis and I speak to people every day that have got three subscribers. Uh, the most I've spoken to you know, recently in the last couple of weeks was 9.4 million subscribers wow. and everybody in between. So I, the cool thing is about what we do is that it applies to absolutely everybody on YouTube. So, um, yeah, the answer is lots. <laughs> Travis, well, um, I mean, you've been with um, vidIQ for not as long as Leron and I, but uh, already making a huge impact. How do you think um, you've helped channels reach that uh, one of the first big milestones? Yeah, a thousand is is there's something special about your first thousand. Yeah. It's really kind of well, I think there's something special about your first hundred, but your first thousand really makes you feel like wow, I'm I've really made an impact. And I mean, yeah, it's hard to know how many we've helped get there. I'm sure uh, a ton plus one. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, listen, uh, it is a really exciting milestone and, uh, something that, uh, should be celebrated when you get there. I mean, it's absolutely amazing to have a thousand people say yes to you and your content. I can give an exact, exact answer here. I have helped 325,743 because that's how many <laughs> subscribers we have on the channel. But here's what I always say about how we help um, video creators. We're just um, hammering signposts into, into the road, which you're going down and we're just helping guide you to the to the path that you're trying to reach. So I always feel as if we contribute in such a small way. I think at the end of the day, uh, beyond the metadata and all of the tools that vidIQ can help you with, a person has got to have a passion for making content and the content is ultimately what's going to succeed for your channel. So yeah, I think we've helped a lot of channels, but always in a small way. It's always down. The, the cream always rises to the crop and I think vidIQ and, and us just help you get there. Uh, we've got another super chat here, by the way, from exactly the same person. Uh, who sent us the first one, Splash and Akashia. And it was simply to say that it's Erhan, not Ethan. <laughs> so uh, I got your name wrong first, but it's cost you $5 for me to correct it. So I hope you really appreciate that. Uh, but thank you for the uh, super chat. Yeah, this is awesome. It's an easy way. If you want us to correctly pronounce your name here on uh, um, the VideoQ live stream, uh, just uh, send us some uh, super chats. You don't have to do about that. It's a joke, by the way. Um, all right, next question we are going to look at here is... All right, okay, this is going to be a, a tricky one, but we're going to tackle it anyway. Uh, Shy Blocks asks, can you tell me, is my name YouTube cool? The name is Shy Blocks. S-H-Y-B-L-O-X. So... Uh, I guess a general question about channel names. How important is it? And is this one cool? Um... um well, first of all, we like it. Um, the idea of blocks is also pretty cool. I don't know if your channel name tells you what the channel is about. So a lot of channels that you'll see, especially go look at that in this chat that's streaming through very, very quickly. You can see ProGamer777. I'm assuming it's a gaming channel, right? So as you go through, people mentally kind of look at this and try to form an opinion what the channel is about. Um, I have my personal name is my channel name because I'm yeah. building you know, myself. But like you, we are very specific, right? Travis builds his channel is very specifically. So when you're thinking of channel names, uh, just bear that in mind. What are you trying to build? Um, also, the last thing to avoid is stuff that's obvious that YouTube's got to have a heart attack with. So don't upset the beast. Yeah. How about you, Travis? Have you ever sort of taken any interest in channel names specifically, or it's just yeah. Something that's one there. time so there is a, and everyone who's in the chat you should look and see if this is available to you there's a uh, local youtuber meetup um in seattle where i live and uh, i remember going to that and everyone was talking about their youtube channels and one person said the channel name and i've never forgotten i'm now friends with him but 
when your name sticks out a year later, like you've heard it once and you'll never forget it, it's a good name. And his name was Metal for Breakfast. I'll never forget that. Um, he's a good guy, really great creator. I, I really like him as a person, but I remember the very first time he said it and I forgot everyone else's name, but that name sticks out. So if you have a name that sticks out, um, that's always the best way to go. I think the one username I always remember from our live streams is Cookie Boy Monster. No idea why that one sticks in my head, but I just like the username. And and yeah, he got a chuckle from the rest of the team. Next question then comes from uh, Exploring with the Nug. That's an unusual username in itself. I want to um, I want to monetize my channel at a thousand subscribers, four thousand hours of watch time, so I can unlock all of the extra features like super chat. Do you think it's a good idea to monetize sooner or later? So perhaps I think the question is as soon as I have monetized should I monetize my content? It's a big question that a lot of people in this chat are probably interested about and striving towards. How important is monetization from an AdSense point of view and the extra YouTube features? And of course, thank you to the super chat that we just got here from XE Ben, which is simply a dollar. So thank you for that super chat. That's a tough one. (laughs) So I I actually had the same problem when it, when I got to a thousand, I, I thought, do I want to monetize? Do I want yeah. to monetize immediately? And I think a lot of people think that all of a sudden, as soon as they can monetize, great, you're going to see a check for a hundred hundred dollars every month. When you first hit a thousand subscribers, unless you've just blown up out of nowhere, I mean, it's not going to be very much. So I like to think of it as if your views are significant enough, and we're talking about thousands upon thousands of views, that you're going to make something out of it maybe but really think about the viewer experience when you're trying to grow a channel and grow subscribers you don't necessarily want to throw an ad in front of your video especially if they're just kind of seeing what you're about um after a while it might make sense but for me personally uh, i i did not turn it on at a thousand a uh, question I want to ask just before Leron uh, steps in on this one. Folks, when you uh, once you reach a, a thousand subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time, give me how much do you think you would earn in a month if you started to monetize your content at that point? I'm really fascinated to know what numbers you're going to come up with in the chat. And then Travis and Leron will share theirs. But yeah, Leron, just going back to the main question about monetization, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that we've kind of become accustomed to YouTube being what YouTube is. There's going to be an ad, you're going to hover your mouse over the skip button, um, and 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 that is what it is. I don't personally have a problem with monetization as soon as you're allowed to. Also, bear in mind when you apply for this, there could be some delays, there could be paperwork, yeah, there could be whatever the process is. Uh, there's no reason not to, and you always can control it. So you can say, this video, I'm going to allow monetization. I'm going to allow ads. That video, I'm not. So then it's up to you. You could set your default to no ads at all, and then when you're ready, simply enable them. I don't really have a problem with waiting um, either, uh, and I don't think there's a right and a wrong. It's not going to hurt your channel. And in fact, personally, I think it might help because YouTube makes money when they show ads. So who knows? But there isn't a right and a wrong here. Yeah, I, I agree. I think monetization is a nice icing on the cake type of thing to have. Switch on if you want to. But by the time you can monetize your channel, you should be thinking about other things. Whether that's making a building a media kit so you can share that with potential brands and sponsors where you can make some serious money. That's where you're really going to start to earn income outside of YouTube. And uh, like super chats are fine and everything. But as I think all of us who've reached a monetization target will, will always preach. Don't think of it as your be all and end all that's what the target you must be hitting. It's just something nice that you have. And when you realize how much money you earn from it in the first couple of months, then you start to realize, no, it's not too that much. So I'm getting some answers here. People are thinking uh, $5, no more than $90, between $12 and $25. Uh, we've got some more crazy answers, such as $2,500, uh, f- between 5 and 20 pounds. Like, uh, Travis, J- Leron, what are your sort of thoughts on how much you your first uh, AdSense paycheck might be? You know when you're sitting on the couch and some small change drops out of your pocket <laughs> yeah. and months and months later you find it, you go, oh, wow, look at this. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much the equation. I kind of go go with with, with making money on 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 views or 4,000 watch hours. What about you, Travis? Can you remember how what were your, was your first AdSense paycheck? I, I think I actually had to wait a couple of months before it added up enough because I think there's like a minimum uh, Yeah, there's a, like a threshold of $100, I believe. Yeah, something like that. So that was, it ended up being like a while before you ever... So your first check will be about 100 bucks, but it might take you a couple months to get there. And to Leron's point, 100%. But let's not also forget, 
Um, and every country is different, but I can tell you for sure in the United States, they are not withholding tax. So you're not really getting $100 because that actually needs to get taxed. You're actually getting less than that. So just remember that as you take money out, yeah. it's not being taxed. So you need to save some. Yeah, I think um, when I first monetized, I was earning maybe one to three pounds a day. So like 50 to 100 pounds a month. It's really not much mm. in the grand scheme of things. But I know it means a lot to you. So of course, yeah. monetization is a huge achievement and well done when you've made it. And just, just on that, I think it's important that it is absolutely a target that we have to go for, yeah. right? So, you know, it's something that sets firmly in stone until they change the stone again. But for right now, we know that that's what, that's what they want you to go for. Go for it. Don't worry about the money. Just hit that milestone. They seem to kind of like the thousand mark. So to, today it's monetization. Tomorrow it could be something else. It's irrelevant. You're just going for that milestone. 4,000 hours, 1,000 subscribers. Go for it. Next question comes from Andrew Cow, and this is directed at me. Uh, why is your subscriber count in your filming room sometimes displaying over a million? And what he's talking about here, a lot of people always ask me about this. Is a, can you see this little clock in the top uh, left, left-hand left corner of your yeah. screen? Uh, it shows you the sub count, and it's called a limetric time. And whenever I tell people and they search and they discover it's $250, they realize why not many people have them. It's really expensive. The reason it sometimes shows a million is because you can set up different uh, YouTube analytics from their API. And occasionally it's updating me on the view count on like a Samsung Galaxy S8 tips and tricks video, which I've forgot to remove. Uh, and it's over a million views now. So that's sometimes why it shows you that. It's the views, not subscribers. It's, as you can see right now, it's showing you um, vidIQ and that's the one that updates most. It's a brilliant tool. Uh, and I think there's something called a flip it as well, which kind of has, has a traditional um, style of going when you get new subscribers, but they are pretty expensive. But I appreciate the question and I hope that answers it. It's a limetric time. Next one then is, what have we got? Uh, this comes from Slavey B. I'm a trading, ga trading card game YouTuber and I was wondering if I should niche into one game or continue posting vid videos for multiple games within the overall TGC niche. General question about niche. So what are our thoughts on how we niche down? Uh, starting with you, Travis. Yeah, I actually get this from a lot of gamers um, lately. I've yeah. had a couple of consults where <clears throat> um, with gaming, like you have to change every so often because a game will die off. Um, my advice for this is always to try to stay similar niche if you want to be able to move your subscribers views over as well. Because if you start, if I subscribe to a channel for, let's say, Mario Kart, and I really enjoy the content. And then Mario Kart kind of dies off and the creator now wants to do Call of Duty. That's so drastically different than it's possible. I just may not watch those videos and very likely will just unsubscribe. Whereas let's say they start out as a Call of Duty, I subscribe for that and they go to Apex Legends. There's a much greater chance of me actually staying and subscribing and watching those videos. Same thoughts, um, Liron? Yeah, I think just remember that you're a TV channel, right? You're, people have tuned in to watch you and you've promised them a certain type of content. If you're watching, um, I don't know, a soccer game, a football game, basketball game, whatever game, and every three minutes something else would interrupt it by doing new sports and weather, you're going to get irritated. So remember, stay within your niche, stay within your lane. People are there for that. Yes, you can pivot to other stuff. Just make sure it's not wildly different. So if you're doing first-person shooters, do another first-person shooter. And you probably already have some answers in your channel. Again, we, we say this a lot, but if you sort by most popular, if you're seeing two or three videos on the same game within that card niche that are popular, then focus on that game for maybe five or ten videos and see what happens. Next question here. I'm going to show this on screen because I'm really going to have a terrible job pronouncing this, but it's Choo Choo Ethiopiwi. I hope I'm somewhere right with that um, pronunciation. How long does it take to see watch time of a video after uploading? And a simple answer to that, uh, Choo Choo, is if you go to the YouTube uh, Studio Beta on the dashboard, you get a snapshot of your most recent video, and after three hours, it will tell you how much watch time it's getting and the average view duration. Sometimes there is a little bit of a hack where you can go into the mobile app, and then you can look at the um, watch time for a video and sort it by 
60 minutes, even though it shows no data. If you don't sort it by 60 minutes, it then shows the data, but sometimes that doesn't work. But yeah, after three hours, you should start to get metrics on your watch, watch time. And after 24 hours, you'll get some more detailed information about audience retention and view counts, impressions, and so on. So essentially, the studio beta is a place that you need to go for that one. Any Anything else to add there, uh, chaps, or have I pretty much um, you answered nailed that it. one? Nailed it. Okay, hmm, here's a question. This is going to be a tough one, uh, but let's go after it. Dr. Zenas Productions is asking, he's from Nepal, how can I grow my YouTube subscriber base worldwide? So I get a general question about a, um, a YouTuber in a particular locale. Um, how do they grow their channel worldwide? Or are they asking the wrong question? Well, this is how I would think about it. Uh, how do you grow your channel within your niche and your audience rather than worldwide? Yeah, that's that's exactly. It's not about location. Um, you know, it's about an audience that wants to see that content. That always, always, always comes first. Um, and there's a couple of ways of looking at this. You can either say, uh, let's just say you speak a particular language um, and you happen to be based in a particular country. You can go after that country or you can go after people speaking that language around, around the world. Um, I worked with these great um, vloggers out of London. Um, she speaks um, oh, one of the Philippines languages, I forget. At, T Tenalog, t something. She speaks Tagalog. Uh, uh, Tagalog. There, thank you. <laughs> she speaks Tagalog. Mm -hmm. And what she did was she started going after that audience by only speaking to her boyfriend who doesn't speak that language. Um, and eventually she's teaching him how to do it. It blew up completely. And that is what they're focusing on. So it's not about, um, you just think about your audience first, then kind of it will, it, it, it will just come naturally because YouTube is worldwide at the end of the day. Travis? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, YouTube will will essentially send your content to the people that want to see it. It's a smart algorithm. It knows how to give the content to the people who want to watch it. So don't worry so much about that. Although I like the fact that you're kind of thinking that way. Um, it, it's definitely smart. So, you know, if you want to like actually aim at one particular culture, just like Liron just said, like you can literally just niche down into a specific um a specific uh you know language or, or if you're like a vlogging channel maybe different food or whatever i mean you can do that but to be perfectly honest you don't generally have to worry about that just do your content do it well youtube will figure out the rest um, nate Rob, sorry go on. so before before you move on I'm, i've seen a lot of the same similar type of questions in the chat yep uh, do you mind if we grab this question and, and sure. jump your queue. Yeah, yeah I, let's go I, for I, it. I know how strict you are with your formatting. So. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke there, folks. Inside joke. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I've got to address a question by All Square. She said, uh, he or she, because I can't really tell, I, I'm getting views but not subscribers. And I've seen a Ooh. lot of you guys asking the same similar kind of yeah. questions. Um, so a couple of things. If you are getting views, it means that people are your your content is being served. Somebody wants to see it. YouTube is matching up your content with an audience. If they're not subscribing, there's reasons for that. The first thing you need to do is go to your analytics. Go look at your retention time, your drop off time. Find out when people are leaving. If they're leaving right at the beginning, you got to do something about your intro. If they're staying towards the, the middle and towards the end great. Are you doing a call to action? Are you telling them to subscribe? Are you giving them a reason to? Also, the other thing to remember before I let the other guys speak is that sometimes people are there just to get an answer. For example, if your channel is, if your one video is all on how to unblock your toilet, well, once somebody knows how to unblock the toilet, you're not going to subscribe. You've just given them the information and views is where it's at. We've got such a focus on subscribers but remember, views means eyeballs. Eyeballs means people are watching your video. People watching your video means that's what brands want to see. So you can make those deals. So just kind of a to answer your question in a long-winded way, that is what I would focus on. Analytics, where people are dropping off, and your call to action. Are you telling them to stick around, pointing them to the next video so they see and they like you? Um, Rob, I'm going to hand this over to you now. I think that's a great question that we should maybe just stick around with for a little while. Mm. I'm going to ask the audience here, like, why do you uh, visit vidIQ? Are you here 
purely to get answers to your questions and get help on how to grow your channel? Or are you here for a little bit more? And I hope the answer is a little bit more these days. Like two or three years ago, I was when I was making VidIQ videos, it was literally just how do you use this tool? An answer to a question. Now, I'm trying to inject a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of comedy. Now, obviously, this is a very subjective film and some people are going to enjoy it and some people are. But you've got to look at it from this philosophy. 20% of you are always going to love your content. 20% of... Uh, 20% of the audience is going to love the content. 20% of the audience are going to hate it. 60% are always going to be indifferent. And that's the, the audience you're trying to attract and appeal to. And if you are just give, getting, giving answers to questions, awesome, you might have evergreen content, but you're not building up a fan base. You're not building up a community. And that's what we're doing with these live streams of the type of videos that I do. And the analytics on our channel are proving that. Certainly in the last six months, we have grown significantly in terms of building a community. Any thoughts from you, Travis, before we move on to the next one? Uh, yes. First of all, uh, Rob is trolling everyone with the mouse cursor over top of Leron's face. Someone tried to actually move it. You can actually <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> Someone didn't actually even realize tried that to was where I do apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I tried I'm to gonna, move gonna, it too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to focus on uh, like the, 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 hide the hideous <laughs> back, the hideous background here that Travis has got. I mean, terrible, yeah, exactly. terrible. Like, <laughs> no, I think you guys absolutely you you crushed it. That the answers were were given. Uh, I I really can't add too much to it. It was so well done. I just wanted to talk about how Rob trolled everybody. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Travis um, just wants the mouse moving. Thank you, by the way, to uh, Zao. Yeah, sorry, go on. Uh, I love to paint. I, I, Ayala Art, I'm assuming that's how you say it. Uh, she says she's here for your magnetic personality. And by the way, she kind of thinks some of the content's cool as well. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> wow. Well, that's the first person who comes for me rather than the, the content here at VidIQ. Thank you to Zhao Zhao, who uh, has a $5 super chat there. Uh, you are very welcome. We're trying to help as many as we can. All right, folks, we are about halfway through this live stream. So what we're going to do now is a five minute quick fire round where we're going to move away from the... Um, Google form, which, wow, has got 90 questions in there. Uh, but we're going to take some quick fire questions from you now. So what I want you to do is uh, put hashtag question in your chat uh, question. And we're going to try and answer as many as we can in five minutes. This is a quick fire round. As soon as I see the first question pop up here on chat, I will start the timer. And Leron Travis and myself will just pick questions and answer them as uh, succinctly as possible. The good news is Jeremy is not here today. <laughs> uh, so you're not going to get five minute answers to the five minute quick fire round. Jeremy, we love you really, but sometimes your answers are a little in depth. Uh, but here we go. We've got some questions coming up. So the first one comes from um, uh, Kevin Tube. Question, how do I grow bigger than PewDiePie? Do videos, PewDiePie versus T-Series. I guarantee you get millions <laughs> of subscribers very quickly. Next question, Leron. What have we I'll got? I'll get it. This one is from Red Bandit. He says, can I get a shout out? Shout out. Done. Travis, <laughs> what's next? I see one that says, question, at 30Ks, do I get to unlock memberships? Uh, you are eligible. Whether or not you will get them unlocked is completely up to YouTube. A uh, question from the Bushcraft Padawan. Is there any value in re revisiting old videos to edit the thumbnails? I have got a video coming out about that on Monday. Uh, interesting case study by Vivo. They up started to update old thumbnails and they increased views by 12% on average over 4,000 videos. So there is value there, but as a channel, it isn't Vivo and it's getting millions of views anyway. You've got to be a bit selective about it. So check out the video that's coming live on Monday. Uh, Leron, what have we got next? T uh, Needless TV official says, how can I grow quickly? Simple, make content people want to watch. It, that, it's funny. I'm just going to hold up on that question. Like if you yeah. ask general blog questions, we're going to give you general broad answers, which aren't going to give you much help. So really think about the questions that you're going to ask. But yeah, good answer. Uh, Travis, what we got next? Uh, TechRant asked, um, uh, profanity, yay or nay in content. Um, obviously, it's niche dependent, but generally speaking, you should be able to probably do content without it. And I think you'll go further. And if you are going to use profanity, I think there's a suggestion that you don't use it in the first 30 seconds because YouTube yeah. seems to analyze like the captions up to that point. And I think Barbara said it in a Creator Insiders video. So mm -hmm. profanity, yeah, maybe try and save it. And so, I mean, be as, um, be as, um, What's the word? How can I think? What? Be as sweary as you want after 30 seconds. Oh. That, that's that's official Sorry. vidIQ uh, tips and tricks there. No, it isn't really. Uh, Leron, what would we have got next? Oh, my God. Um, is doing, this is future overload, is doing daily worth it to grow a channel? In other words, should you producing content on a daily basis? Um, it's not quantity. Um, 
quantity over quality. Remember, you're making videos for your audience. If you're just going to produce a lot of garbage, YouTube is not going to reward you for that. Rather, make better videos, slow it down, just keep your audience coming. If you're doing it once a week and people are loving it, great. If you want to up it to two times a week, perfect. Um, if you, as soon as you put yourself under that pressure of once a day, you, you, you're going to have issues. Somebody's just challenged me to juggle on the live stream. So I'm going to juggle for the next until uh, oh. Travis and Leron answer a question. So I'm going to try oh this. Goodness. So Travis, you take a question. This. I'm going to start juggling. But oh, how, how am I going to answer a question and juggle? Okay. Uh, oh, here's one. Is there, <laughs> ask if there's a way that I can chat personally with you, Rob. Is there a way to ch personally chat with you, Rob? Well, well not while I'm juggling. That's a bit hard. <laughs> um, I, I, unfortunately, I get asked so many questions that it's impossible to answer them all. Like, the best thing is to post in comments and maybe Twitter DM. But yeah, I, I'll be honest, I get asked a lot of questions and I can't answer them all. Although, that, although because that's what I'd be doing all day, every day. Leron, carry on. I'm going to do a bit more juggling here for the fans. Right. Grey Slack Media. Do titles, tags, and description get more views? Yes, 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 and yes. Um, remember, YouTube is a search engine. Uh, YouTube needs to understand about your information. Focus on your title. So you helping YouTube understand who wants to see that video. Titles, titles, titles. I uh, dropped my juggling ball, so I'm going to move on to a question okay. here, which is from More Duplicator. Uh, how do I enable the community tab after 1K? And I think this is also a question about how to enable... Um, well, everybody should be getting a community tab after 1,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, if you haven't got it, YouTube, I think, say maybe it takes a week or two to enable it, for them to enable it. But if it's still not working, you can always try the help and feedback um, tool on YouTube pages and just send them an image saying, I've got 1,000 subscribers, but I haven't got a community tab. Can you unlock it? And, you, and YouTube may do something about it or they may not. So maybe just giving them a jab and a nudge may help unlock it. But usually it's between a, a two... Oh, one or two weeks. We got forty seconds left. We got through loads here. Travis, let's take another one. Should I aim to get ten minute videos? Yes and no. You don't make a ten minute video on a thirty second subject, but if your video can be entertaining or educational and you can spread it to ten minutes, that's great. But don't overspread something just to try to hit ten minutes. Ten minutes is great just because you get more watch time. Um, your average watch time should go up. So aim for something that's long enough, but not too long. Uh, my advice always with this question is uh, aim to get 50% audience retention and then when you've got 50% audience retention, then start to increase the length of your videos and see if you can maintain the audience retention. Uh, Liron, one more question with five seconds left in a quick fire round. Uh, do you follow a channel that feeds ants with human food? Oh? <laughs> <laughs> um, people will follow anything. If that's what they're interested in, they're going to follow it. So if you have a passion for something, I once audited a channel that watched plants grow, I, I, oh. and I'm not kidding. Um, so people just do it. People watch elevators all the time. If that's your thing, go big. <laughs> There's some quotes that I love to clip here, and uh, the one of Leron just saying, people watch elevators all the time. I just want to clip that sound bite and put it in like <laughs> a special special montage of live stream moments. All right, folks, uh, thank you for that awesome uh, five-minute Q&A quickfire round. We're going to take a very quick break here, and when we come back, we're going to be taking more questions from the form. So make sure to uh, get your questions in there, and we'll try and get through as many as we can. Back in around about two minutes. If your YouTube channel is stuck in a rut, maybe it's time you gave it the vidIQ boost treatment. Still not convinced? Here's 10 reasons why you should. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. With VidIQ Boost, you have complete access to one of the most powerful marketing tools on YouTube, the Channel Audit. It will show you in a snapshot what's working on your channel, what isn't working on your channel, and all of those little things like titles, tags, and end screens that you need to fix. We also take the guesswork out of search engine optimization with our keyword suggestion tools. Knowing what people are searching for means you know what to include in your titles, tags and descriptions, all of which you can add with a single click. With our competitor tracking tool, you can follow up to 20 channels working in the same video space as you. If their content is catching fire, chances are they're doing something right and you need to add your own spin to the topic. One of our Boost exclusive tools is Bulk SEO. This analyzes content you have already published and shows you how people are finding that content and how you can improve it further with keywords you're not even using. 
Have vidIQ do the work for you by alerting you through email with a list of videos that are trending based on your search criteria. If you see a trend blowing up, it's time to ride that wave for massive channel growth. Want to quickly post videos natively on Facebook rather than YouTube links? Our syndication tool can do that for you in just a few easy clicks. Through subscriber analysis, you can discover what your fans do when they're not watching you. This can help you discover new video topics and channels of interest, as well as understanding when your subscribers are online, so you know the best time to publish your content. Have you ever wanted to know which channels covering similar topics to you are having viral moments, no matter how big or indeed how small the channel is? Our most viewed tool will help you uncover those hidden gems. With vidIQ Boost, you also get vidIQ Pro features as well, which include our titles, tags and descriptions translation tool, as well as the controversial keyword checker, saving you from possible demonetization flags. And while we're on the subject of upgrade banners and locked features and rocket icons you might have seen as a vidIQ free user, with vidIQ Boost, all of this goes away. You have complete access to every single one of our tools. Our support team is available and ready to answer your questions in the supported languages on screen now. Start boosting your channel today and let us educate you. And there we are, folks. In case you didn't realize, that is vidIQ's day job, the Chrome extension, which will help you research YouTube, analyze every single video on YouTube, audit your own channel, and take actionable steps to grow your channel. It is free to download. There's a link in the description, to, so do make sure to check it out if you haven't already downloaded uh, vidIQ. All right, Leron and Travis, let's get into some more questions here from the form in our video description. And this comes from Scope Junkie. And the question is, how do you talk to people on streams and videos? I play Fortnite, by the way. I'm, so I'm a little confused as, as a question, how do we, like what we're doing now, talk to people on streams? Or how does a person do it when they are live streaming on Fortnite? So... Uh, to answer the first question very quickly, we're using a program called Streamlabs, which allows us to live stream and it shows all the chat. Uh, I mean, YouTube can do this natively, but Streamlabs allows me to do all of these fancy graphics that you're seeing. If you wanted to do it while you were live streaming a game, I guess you would use something like Twitch. Do either of you two have more experience with how you would maybe talk to people while gaming, Travis Holly Runner? It's not an area I'm f too familiar with. Yeah, you can use Streamlabs for that as well. Absolutely. Oh, so you'd use the same sort of software um, if you had a PC. Yep. And what about on a console? Is there any sort of chat features there, or do you have to have a console that feeds into a PC to enable to that, that sort of live streaming? Well, it depends. So the Xbox, um, and I think PS does as well, has a you can actually stream directly from it, but you don't get all the cool things and it's harder to kind of see the chat and everything. Um, so you're just better off running it into your computer and then using stream, uh, stream. I use uh, Streamlabs OBS myself. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. So yeah, uh, that's what, that's the way I would recommend it. Okay, so I think at the end of the day, probably a PC or a Mac is going to be involved to get the best experience for communicating with your audience if you're playing games. Next question comes from Sang, uh, Sanga Perez Jimenez, I think. How do you make the PewDiePie vs. T-Series time lapses? So... Uh, again, I use the program that we're using right here, right now, which is Streamlabs, and it's simply a case of putting a, a jigsaw together, taking elements from different websites, like taking uh, the time and the clock from, I think, worldclock.com or something like that, taking the sub counts from where we need them and, like, the subscriber difference, and it's, it's just, like... Uh, cropping each of those images out and then putting them on screen and it's it is a lengthy process probably takes a couple of hours to make it and then once you've done it i just let it run for 12 hours then i've uh, and record it rather than streaming it then i've got the recording put it into a video editor add a um, speed clip and increase that speed like times 100 and that's how you get that super fast running of a time lapse uh, people have asked me this a couple of times so i may do a video on how to do this if people really want to know but it looks as if that race might be over soon with uh, T-Series zooming ahead but that's happened before and yeah who knows why, what might happen in the future on that one so that is generally how I make it I would switch to that live stream now but I'm worried that I would completely crash the program so I'm <laughs> not going to risk doing that during a live stream uh, and then the next question comes from Swaggy Gamer, who says, "How do I delete T Series?" Uh, no. I'm afraid we don't, uh, we can't help you with that one, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, right, Red Bandit asks this question: I have under 15 subscribers, so uh, 
new channel, probably at the beginning of their journey. How do I become visible on the platform at this stage? How do I get the ball rolling? I need practical answers as most of the videos on YouTube don't help. All right, how do we help? Where do we start when we have really small channels? What would be our general advice to kickstart one? Starting with you, Liron, I think, on this one. Okay, so when you're starting a channel, it doesn't matter what industry, what niche, what anything. Um, it's all about understanding the kind of stuff that your audience actually wants to see. Make content that you're cool with, make content you're proud of, make content you're going to get a little bit better with every single video. But be specific, be niche, be focused. So somebody discovering your channel says, oh, this is the Fortnite channel. Oh, this is the uh, Apex Legend channel. This is the gaming channel, whatever it is. But be specific. So people start to build and build and build. And you start to understand what's working and what isn't working. And then you just do more of the stuff that's working. So go for it. Travis? Yeah, I think for smaller channels, it's really critical to uh, use SEO tactics that we show, especially with tags and titles and such, um, because you don't have the the audience to to give the algorithm enough information about the video to then know who it's going to send it out to. So you kind of need to show up in search results. So really do all the things we talk about when you're setting up tag titles. We have tons of videos about this on this channel. So make sure you go through those. As a smaller channel, that's how you're going to grow. And just like Leron said, if you have a very succinct kind of channel message, that along with using some good SEO will definitely grow you. I've got a, a mindset approach to this. Uh, as a small channel, I would not worry so much about trying to build an audience and subscribers yet. I think this is the opportunity for you to discover yourself as a video creator. And what I mean by this is if you've made 50 to 100 videos and hardly anybody's watched them and you're still passionate about that aspect of, of YouTube, then I think you should... Uh, start to uh, expand your audience because I know a lot of people burn out on just making video after video after video wanting that immediate feedback and I always feel as if the ones who succeed started making videos first because of their passion for video creation rather than being a YouTuber if I put it in quotation marks so I think this is the opportunity for you to become a better video creator so that when you do have an audience they're not spotting these issues with audio or present in front of camera or whatnot so use this opportunity opportunity to uh, increase improve one percent and improve your content uh, but i think all uh, all suggestions there are completely valid next question here from uh, zy ling gaming i used to do ninja fishing on my channel i have no idea what ninja fishing is i must admit but then had to stop due to national exams only recently i found out that it is actually getting me a lot of views and subs I tried uploading these videos again, but they were not so successful. What should I do now? Uh, if you two want to try and tackle that one, I'm just going to search for what ninja fishing actually yeah, well, is. Before you move up that question, okay, yeah. too late. Um, well, get back. Can you get the question back on screen? All right, hang on. We'll Cause, just cause... right. Like uh... I'm trying to understand. Was it? Did you take stuff off YouTube? So I, I so. I think this crit had to stop due to uh, exams, life getting in the way exams. Yeah. Only reason I found that it's actually getting me a lot of views and subs. I tried uploading these videos again. Okay, so I'm assuming that you did certain amount of videos. It was, it seemed, then you had to stop doing, you had other commitments, and then you kind of started seeing, oh, it's getting me subs and, uh, and views. And then you made different content along the, on the same topic. Is that what you're trying to get at? I um, think so, yeah. Ninja Fishing is a game it looks like here. Uh, quite um, an, uh, a video, okay. a game that's maybe about a year or two old, perhaps, looking at it. So, so I'm trying... guessing I'm guessing that the video creator was making content when that game was popular, right. and now it isn't. B only assumption, but that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so the idea is maybe to try and understand those. So go look at those um, videos again. Are they currently still getting you views? Um, or was it like a spike at one point when you weren't looking and now it's kind of bottomed out again? Go and kind of look in those analytics and really understand your top videos. What is what is the retention? Are people staying or are they leaving? How many views are you getting? What is the source? What's giving you those um, those views on those videos? That's going to really give you a lot of clues to say, if it is, is it worth doing? Or should you kind of just move on to something else? Yeah, 
I think that's a sound advice for that one. Any thoughts just there, Travis, just while I look for uh, another question to tackle? Yeah, no, I think we run got everything. Um, I, ninja fishing just sounds interesting, though. I, <laughs> I need to understand Everybody's what is happening. Ninja fishing now. <laughs> How do you ninja fish? <laughs> Sneaking up on the fish? Slicing them? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Next question here, then, from VSNU. Which one is better? Daily vlogs, which are average, or weekly vlogs with... Oh, sorry, daily vlogs, which are average, or weekly vlogs, which are quality content. So the classic question of quality versus content, we get this a lot. Uh, what are we going to say about this one? Well, it's easy. What are your audience... What does your audience want? Yeah, you keep going back to that, really, and, and it is a good point. It's like, what does your audience want? You're, right, you're absolutely right there, Leroy. At the end of the day, it's it's we all think kind of we're, we're emotionally invested in our content. We've spent time, we've built it, we've edited, we've shot it, we've titled it, we've done everything we're supposed to. And as beautiful as that process is, sometimes the audience just doesn't care. And at the end of the day, if that's who you're making content for and you're trying to grow your channel for a specific audience, spend time in your analytics. If you've got vidIQ, the free version, we have a free version. You don't have to have the paid one. Even in the free version, you're able to instantly see what's working and what isn't working. That is where I would spend my time on to understand, hey, what's my audience telling me? What do they want more from me? And then just do more of that. And I would answer this by saying... Uh, if you are attacking uh, trending content, then it's quantity over quality, quality. to get that content out yeah. first. Mm -hmm. If yeah. your audience is interested in the value and there's no time sensitivity, then you go for the quality content. Uh, Travis, do you want to add anything to this or shall I throw you the next question? Let's go to the next one. I think yeah, okay. So this question is from Jeremy Games and it's how do I get 1,000 subscribers without the need of a big camera or I assume a good camera or a camera with lots of specs and flashy stuff? Yeah, not even hard. Um, there's plenty of channels <laughs> out there that only use phones. Uh, matter yeah. of fact, El Jefe, who's in the chat, for the vast majority of his first, I think, six or 7,000 subscribers just used his phone. Um, I know I started my channel with a phone. It, it, it really, if you have a smartphone, which I would think that you would, um, that's it. I mean, the thing has a better camera than cameras that were built, you know, five, six years ago when people were on doing YouTube. So um, as long as your quality is decent and your audio is good, that's the big thing. Make sure your audio is good. Um, you don't need a, you know, a multi-thousand dollar or even several hundred dollar um, camera because really you already have one if you have a phone. Um, can I just um, throw one thing in here? I don't know if people in the chat have heard of someone called Mr. Beast. I know he's not that big or popular, but you know, <laughs> if you have heard of him, uh, he started his YouTube channel with his cell phone. I think it was the iPhone 5 he said it was. Um, and he did it until he got like a serious number of subscribers. So um, we can all agree that your phone today is going to do much more than his little phone did back in the day. So don't let that stop you. Simple answer from me, never use technology as an excuse to make videos because I think that's what people do. The thing that you have, and nobody can take this away from you, is your own skills. Develop them before you buy the technology because it could be that you buy a really expensive camera and you have no idea how to use it. That's what happened with me. I still don't really understand ISOs, apertures, and I always find uh, the filming like a, a variable and a barrier to the end content. So I've never been uh, big on uh, really fancy cameras and stuff. I just I, I get along with it, but I often have arguments whenever I buy new technology. So I always think of that. As soon as you upgrade you've almost got what like five or ten steps back before you can move forward so yeah always be looking at improving your skills at first the next question comes from uh, xc ben who i think uh, we had the super chat earlier on thank you for that i have vidIQ installed and i see other channel stats on the right side while watching their videos when i watch mine it doesn't show all the details like average subs per day why is this uh, okay, so it sounds like you're saying the opposite here. What it will show on your own videos is extra information such as uh, country demographics, uh, mobile demographics, and subs driven to your videos. But it shouldn't show that for other people's videos because that's private data for that channel. So if that's wrong, then please get in touch with vidIQ support at 
contact at that is it support at vidiq.com and we'll be able to assist you with that but your videos on your watch page will show you more information because you've authenticated your channel with vidiq so i hope that answers that question right i've remembered travis you have around about six minutes left don't you so yes with the time yes. that we have left we're going to do uh, another uh, five minute quick fire round folks so once again we're going to have a hashtag question in the uh, live chat if you put hashtag question in it allows us to quickly see the question and then read it out as quickly as we can so as soon as i see the first one i will start our countdown uh, and while uh, i'm waiting for that let's do a bit of filler if you're enjoying this uh, live stream don't forget to like it subscribe to vidiq if you haven't already done so and share this live stream with others who may find it useful because i think we've already answered about 50 questions in the hour that we've been on all right first question here we go five minutes to go um RJ McIntyre, the Scottish gamer, asks, why do views fluctuate? And I think the answer is what Leron's been saying multiple times already. It's because your audience has reacted well or not so well to certain bits of content. For example, we are doing some PewDiePie vs. T-Series content and we get a lot more views on that versus the other uh, How to Grow Your Channel stuff because we it's just a huge interest in that news story right now and we're bringing in a lot of subscribers from that. But we want to try and appeal to all of our audience. So that's why we're having big fluctuations but we're absolutely fine with that because we're growing as a channel. Essentially, uh, look at your most popular content uh, and like look at the keywords, the titles, the topics you covered. That's what your audience wants. Make more of that. Travis, go. Uh, I changed my content to gaming now at 1.6k uh, subs. How long is it going to take me to regain my audience? You need a lot, I need a lot more uh, information. What were you before? Um, if you were like a cooking channel and went to gaming, it's going to take you a, a lot longer than if you just go from one game to another game. And there's really no answer for this. Um, just continue to be very succinct in your message and very consistent, and you will regain an audience. Liram? Raging Raven, question. On a scale of one to uh, ten. Yeah, I was going to pick oh. this one, but go for it. <laughs> <laughs> How much do thumbnails matter? They matter... 10 plus uh, the reason they matter is because your videos will come up in search remember um, and then when it comes up in search it competes with all the other thumbnails that come up in search and what do thumbnails make us do they make us stop and get our attention read the title and decide if to click or not to click so critical your thumbnails have to pop get somebody's attention so a hundred, I think, is the answer. I'm going to go for seven point five. I oh, think come on. The, 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 the title's got to be important as well. I think that uh, contributes as well. The title um, finds you, but the <laughs> but the thumbnails we have to, to click. Uh, well, uh, it depends. It depends if the title and the thumbnail work in tandem. I think right. Those I are the most okay. Good point. Okay. Nine and a half. Chat. Right, next question uh, was, it comes from, this was um, Foxy, uh, where's it gone now? It was something about, here we go. Uh, so Foxy Fox, uh, Lapis King. So if you've got two usernames, that's a little confusing. But the question is, 15 subs and 2,500 subs total. Is that normal? No, that doesn't sound normal at all. I would be expecting you to maybe have 50 to 100 subscribers maybe from that amount of views. So something seems a little curious there. Again, it could be you're a how-to channel and you're giving an answer to a question, but people don't necessarily want to subscribe to your content. Um, so yeah, it seems a little off. Um, next question. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to say about that. <laughs> Uh, let's see a uh, question um oh man i just oh can uh no i don't want to do that one i want to do it way too hard uh okay what, what's a good percentage for a ctr and retention um the higher the better obviously uh youtube tells us between two and ten percent is where 50 percent of all videos lie so the higher up that scale you can get the better if you're near 10 percent, you're a rock star if anything above that you're a super rock star and then retention as high as you possibly can get it try to get 100 at the end a realistic thing to aim for is to try to get around 50% retention by the end of the video. Um, it can be tough at first, but those are some really good goals to go for. I always worry about this question because it, it's some, when somebody asks what is a good XXX, it means you're trying to yeah. compare it against something else. Here's what I would do. Find out what it is today, benchmark that, and aim to improve on that. That's the only way you can yep. look at this. Yep. Uh, that is, is uh, the general answer. Liron, what can you find uh, here? Okay, just scroll so quickly. Um, okay, oh, okay. Well, uh, Raging Raven again. What are the best ways to make thumbnails without Photoshop? Uh, lots of online tools. Um, Canva.com. Canva, Canva is, is good, one, yeah. Gimp is another one, I think. Start. Gimp is another one. Um, if, you, if you're not good at thumbnails, you're not a great designer, Hop over to something called Fiverr.com. Look for a couple of people that create you some templates and just use those until you get yourself going. 
Number one, Martian, will there be a dark mode for the editor studio? Um, are you talking about a dark mode for the creator beta studio or vidIQ? I think the answer for vidIQ is uh, there will eventually be a dark mode for it. Uh, and I know that the, uh, when you go into the editor for the creator studio, it goes into the dark mode, but I, can you switch the new studio to dark mode yet? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I can I, it's, but I, I can only assume so, but we just don't know yeah. when. Travis, we've got 30 I seconds saw, left. Does, can we get does the file name matter with the video and thumbnail? Uh, I have not seen this matter at all. You do, of course, need a title, um, which it will default the title of your um, yeah. video to the, whatever the file name was. So obviously change that. But my type, my file names are like QX032. Uh, by the yeah. way, they, they used to before they used, to, yeah, out of time. I agree. They used yes. to and people used to hack the algorithm by calling it a certain name for SEO purposes uh, but that but it's no longer matters I would say, yeah, stuff, st uh, all of these questions like, um, does uh, the file name matter? And there's some of the strange myths that may have been true in the past, but I think almost certainly all of them now are not true because the algorithm is so sophisticated that I don't think even half of the YouTube employees understand <laughs> any of it. Well, I, I think uh, Tim Schmoyer said that the algorithm has got 80 million data points that it looks at, which sounds ridiculous, but... I mean, I, I, what I, I think what I'm trying to say is try, wrapping your head around these sorts of questions will just get you in a twist anyway. It's like, again, you're trying to work to the algorithm satisfaction rather than your audience, which Liron has said a number of times already. Uh, it's the your audience is always most important. Travis, it's been a yes. blast. I believe you have to go. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, just say a final goodbye for, so that you're on camera waving at everybody. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. And there he goes. Travis is uh, exiting. He's uh, doing his actual day job now where he audits channels. <laughs> but of course, we will be auditing more of your channels on the Tuesday live stream at 11 a.m. PST. So, Liron, we've got a few more minutes to tackle a couple more questions here uh, from the Google form. Uh, and so let's just see. I've just got to now try and find another one. Uh, I hadn't already been set one up. Um, somebody asking for a channel review. We don't do channel reviews in this live stream. We do them on a Tuesday. So make sure to pop back then. Okay, I'm going to try and answer this one. It comes from uh, the Panda Man Inventor. I remember I called this person the Padawan on Tuesday because I was getting <laughs> all my uh, words mixed up. How does it affect my channel if a topic I focus on changes multiple times? For example, I started my channel with gaming, then switched to remote control planes, then switched to what I do now, which is inventing. So again, it's this question of uh, audience expectations. I think essentially when you switch your um, your audience, you're going to lose a significant number of your subscribers because it's as simple as this. When you uh, watch a program on television, let's say you watch uh, the Game of Thrones, and then all of a sudden the next week they're um, doing uh, like a Mario Kart, go-kart theming drive around King's Landing, which makes absolutely no It's like jumping the shark. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I'm going to put, I'm going to rephrase this as when people change their channels, they're almost like jumping the shark. If And I'm saying that now and I'm realising half of people might not understand what that is. Um, so yeah, do I go any further with this, Leron, or am I just digging myself a hole? Yeah, uh, can I carry on? You're doing well. <laughs> yeah, I think you should take, keep, take over this digging. one. Keep digging. That's looking Yeah. <laughs> So I think what it is, is when um, sometimes when a television channel goes a little absurd and it's not what you expect, then it really alienates the audience. And I think that's the same as what happens on a channel. If you yeah. suddenly switch topic, you're alienating your audience. And you may have to do it that. If you're pivoting, that's absolutely fine. You've just got to accept that the audience that originally subscribed to you are not going to do that, are not going to stay with you. And then you have to build up a new audience. Liron, help me out here. Is there anything yeah, else again, it's all about, I keep saying this a million times because it's all about the audience. Think of it yourself. You subscribe to a channel. You come to vidIQ because you want to learn how to level up your channel. You want to learn tips and tricks about YouTube, right? That's why you're subscribing. If we keep on now, if tomorrow morning, Rob's latest video is going to be how to bake a chocolate cake in the oven. You're going to yeah. think it's a little bit weird. Then if his next video is back to making YouTube videos, you're like, okay, cool. All right, it's back to growing the channel. Then he's going to hit you with Tottenham versus Manchester <laughs> United, um, who did what in the game. And you're going to go, whoa, what's going on? And now it's going to irritate you. So that's what you're doing to your audience. Whenever you're pivoting to something else, you're confusing everyone. Some will stay. Some of them are not going to care, but a lot of them will leave. Find your thing. Stick to it. Once you're big enough, then you can do basically anything you want.
And folks, if you had no clue what I was talking about, then just Google Happy Days, Jump in the Shark. It's safe for work, uh, but it's a, like a, a bit of a 1980s reference in terms of what on earth wow. I was trying to talk about. All right, next question it comes from Cherry Tongue, luxury fashion and money hacks. Is it necessary to start a new channel if you want to venture into different topics? In other words, from lush luxury fashion and money hacks to millionaire and business mindset. Interesting question, Liron. How would you tackle this one? Um, um, I'm going to say this again. Think <laughs> of the audience, right? So if you're pivoting to something that's similar, so somebody is into luxury goods, um, it would make kind of sense that they're into luxury services or make sense they're into businesses, maybe entrepreneurship, maybe mindset. Those are all in the same camp. So you should be okay to pivot slightly. <laughs> there is a crossover, isn't there? Yeah. There has to be. That's why uh, uh, that makes sense to me. And it's how you portray it. So if you're kind of doing day one, these top 10, um, I don't know, Fendi handbags what? to get in Paris. Well, and then the next day you're doing all about how to grow your business from scratch. It's so wildly apart that it's going to be weird. But if you're going to lead them on a journey, say, you know what? We're now going to, we've bought your, your, your Fendi bag. Now, let's talk about how we got here. Let's talk about the start of our businesses. And then you slowly pivot them across. I think you'll do a lot better. The I just had a quick check at the channel size. It was four and a half thousand subscribers. So probably trying to have two areas mm. of a channel at this point. It might be a little too early. So you might want to start a new channel. But again, you're going to have to start from scratch with that other channel. So I think as Liron says, you can kind of sort of, even like within a video, there may be mm. like 30 seconds where you're just sort of introducing something else from your life, which is these um, the, this business mindset. And I think that's a good way to maybe slowly introduce it. And I've seen a lot of other videos video creators successfully do that. But just remember, the people probably subscribe to our channel because of the luxury fashion in the first place. And they'll tell you in the votes. I mean, they'll tell in the views, sorry. I mean, you'll, yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. see them instantly. You'll see every time you do one that veers away, instead of getting X number of, of views, you get Y number of views. Look at the retention. People have dropped off instantly. Your audience has spoken. They don't want that stuff. Or it's the other way around, in which case, off you go. It's a chore thing asks, do channels tend to really take off after posting 100 videos? It's a curious question. It's, I'm wondering if you've kind of got this mindset from maybe what a lot of us say here in the YouTube sort of help ecosphere, such as Roberto Blake uh, and Sean Cannell will say, like, make 100 videos and then you can start to really understand how YouTube works. And I think it's just basically a case of once you've made 100 videos, you can go back to your first videos and you can see the progress that you've made as a video creator, which your audience is always go also going to recognize as well. So it's, I think 100 videos kind of sounds like the um, the initiation period, I think, for a lot of video creators. For me, I think it was about 250 videos before I really found my niche and a home on YouTube. What about you, Liron? Like, when did you start to feel as if you'd kind of worked out YouTube to a certain extent? Because, I mean, obviously nobody has done completely, but... Yeah, that's true. Um, but I, I think the channel is the, the question is also about um, that focus. I, the the theory behind, as Rob was saying, it. I think people are, on YouTube are telling you not to dwell too much in the numbers up until you hit a hundred view, a hundred videos. So it's mm. more about don't get lost in saying, "Oh, I've only received three views. Oh, it's four views now. Oh, I'm I'm going to give up because that's going to demotivate you." So the hundred before it starts to take off. Is not really a benchmark or a thing. We've seen channels where they had three videos and the third yeah. one took off. Um, Jack Black, his 15 second video with no thumbnail, got something like five million views in the first uh, couple of couple of weeks, whatever it was. So it's not a number because YouTube will pick up content that it likes, but it's more of a mindset. Don't worry about the analytics for the first hundred, and then start to kind of home in your content. And let's see, I'm going to take another question. Uh, I'm not going to take that one. Do you support T-Series or PewDiePie? I've had that question asked uh, several time. times in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, let's take... Um, all right, we'll take this one uh, from Foxy Fox. Oh, no, we've just had that question, actually, in the quick fire round. Um, tech rant. Is there a list of words that are blacklisted or will cause demonetization on YouTube. So there isn't a list. 
We do have a tool which is called the Controversial Keywords Tool, which is kind of like our best guess and bringing in um, controversial words from a lot of different sources. And that's to be used as a guide, but YouTube has never officially published uh, such a thing. Because I always think um, if YouTube publishes these types of things, someone somewhere will find a way to game uh, wor or work that to their advantage. But I simply use your common sense. And the Creator Insider has um, done a video which does list some of those words and I think I also um, referenced it in one of our videos and it's all of the usual stuff like the f-bombs and like really really um, nasty where I can't think of a, the right terminology to use but I mean if, if look at it from this way if if it would you say that word to your mum or mom because I'm remembering it's in a US audience. Would you say that word to your mum? If the answer is no, don't use it on YouTube, I would say. There are, I mean, the F-bombs are accepted and, and so on, but once you start doing that, then you, the YouTube is going to raise an eyebrow, the advertiser is going to raise an eyebrow, and then you're just getting yourself into more and more trouble. Any, I mean, I don't really monetize my content anymore, Leron. So have you ever walked into any of these issues or pretty much use your common sense on that one? Yeah, it's common sense. And I also, I want to make sure my, that uh, YouTube's hard, guys. YouTube is so difficult. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to make it any harder, yeah. Uh, why would you want to throw yet another stumbling block to tell YouTube, hey, my content's dodgy. Please look at me six times before you start promoting it. Just keep it simple. Keep it that it's vanilla. Anybody can watch it from anywhere in the world and not be offended. I think it's just common sense. Orlando theme part 360 does raise a good point here. Gary V, Gary Vanachuk, uh, does uh, use a lot of profanity. If you've never um, heard him or seen him, just uh, search him on Twitter and you'll uh, find some sort of swear word within the first five to ten seconds. So you are right, but Leron, you were going to say something there, so uh, go ahead. Yes, um, interesting point that uh, Gary V has just launched another channel, Yes, swear word free. So he did yeah. that for a reason, because he was obviously understanding these two audiences those that can put up with his beep and those that cannot and he's catering to both and another thing is that uh, Gary V is not trying not trying to earn an income from monetizing his content on YouTube. Definitely. He doesn't care about that. He's interested in raising awareness of his brands and him as a personality and through his I'm going to call unique uh, approach to language. Uh, that's, that gives him more notoriety. So that's one reason why he does it. Thank you very much to Unbox Warehouse with the $10 super chat. He says, Ooh. split that with the techie guy. So Travis is not getting any of this. He needs to put in a full shift yes. if, he's, uh, if he's going to get any share of the, uh, of the super chats. But thank you very much. And that, folks, brings to an end uh, this uh, Q&A live stream. We've had a blast again, Leon and I, as well as Travis. Thank you so much for the questions. We got 124 submissions for questions here, which is amazing. Unfortunately, we can't answer all of them. And we got lots of questions in a quick fire round. I hope we uh, answered as many as we can. And uh, if you want to just say goodbye, we'll certainly shout you out as we uh, say goodbye here. If you did oh, enjoy oh, this... What we do, we do. Oh. Rob, Rob, this protocol, oh. this protocol. We forgot to ask the audience a most important question. Oh, go ahead. Should we, should we do this again? Yeah, do yeah. This was it, useful. Do, would you guys want to tune in again? We, we're here for you. We, we're very happy to do this. But if it's not giving you value, you know, we don't want to waste your time. So if you're yeah. cool with it, give us a yes or a thumbs up in the chat so we know that this is, should be on our radar. You're absolutely right, Liron. This is like the second time we tried this, and we as a group enjoyed doing it, and we thought we you got some uh, good feedback off it. The numbers are up this week, so we think we're doing the right thing, but yeah, absolutely, let us know in the uh, comments. So yeah, uh, do like this live stream if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to VideoIQ if you haven't already done so. Uh, share this video with other video creators who may find this useful, and download the VideoIQ Chrome extension so that we can give you help 24-7 when uh, Liron, uh, Jeremy, uh, myself, and Travis Travis are tucked up in bed because we cannot answer questions 24-7. Thank you very much to the following, which include Talha Gaming, Pokemon Mikey, uh, Ejector Gaming, The Ninth Doctor, Hayes Housey, Peter Rowe, RJ McIntyre, the Scottish gamer, flexing his muscles there. Thank you very much. Unbox <laughs> Warehouse, thank you for the super chat. Rose Boys, and who else have we got there, Liron? Cool. You've done well. Uh, I love to paint. We, you missed that one. Um, Talia Gamer. Um, 
yeah, I, I think you pretty much know. Kali Mai, Wera, Collectible somebody said, Reviews. Hug, somebody said hug each other, so everybody give each other a virtual hug. Please Leron. do hug each other. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. now going to, my arms are now going towards Leron to hug, but they kind of disappear. Oh, no, right, you're doing it camera to camera, right, okay. Camera camera. Yeah. It doesn't really work, but you get the idea. Folks, it's been a blast. Uh, happy Easter, of course, and we will see you on the live stream on Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your video making day. Bye for 